One tip I would have for everyone here, which I found really helpful in my own dating journey is assuming that you're only ever gonna see this person for one date. Now, I know that sounds a bit defeatist, a bit pessimistic, a bit brutal, but hear me out on this. There's logic and reason behind this madness. Hello and welcome to the Salt YouTube channel. My name is Paddy. I'm a single Christian guy in my late 20s. Today we're going to be talking about all about the process from matching to meeting and tips for success in managing the early stages of online dating dynamics. So congratulations, you've found someone that you like on the app and you've matched with them. So how do you go from matching to getting the ball rolling with conversation? So this is my first tip, which is making the first move. Now, I don't think it really matters here who makes the first move. I know some people have some strong opinions that the guy should always be the one to make the first move. But ultimately, if you really like someone, it's so much easier if you just go for it. And as a guy, I really appreciate women who make the first move because it shows a level of intentionality and a level of confidence that's really attractive from the get-go. Regardless of who initiates the conversation, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a strong opener to carry the conversation forwards. This brings me on to my next tip, which is making a good first impression. Now, I see a lot of people making mistakes in this area by having openers like, hey, how are you, or how's your day or week going? And whilst this conveys the sentiment that you care about the person and it's a nice way to open up a conversation, it doesn't make you stand out as an individual in a way that's gonna grab someone else's attention on an online dating scenario. What I would instead advise is that you devise an opener based on something about them as an individual. So go and read their profile, find something you like about them, make sure that you have something to talk about, whether it's a mutual interest you have in common or something that you found really interesting about them as an individual. Not only will this show that you've taken the time and care to read and understand them a little bit more as a person, but it also then means that you have something really interesting to talk about and carry the conversation forwards with. So let's say there's a decent amount of back and forth, you guys are having a great conversation, you're excited to get to know each other more, so how do you escalate this further? Again, this is an area where I see mistakes have been made around becoming pen pals rather than escalating things to a date. What do I mean by this? Well, if you're having conversations that drag over days or weeks without one of you suggesting that you're meeting up, then it's probably not gonna be very productive and the chances of things fizzling out are very, very high indeed. So as a general rule of thumb, depending upon what you're comfortable with, I would suggest having no more than two days worth of text conversation before someone suggests meeting up. So if that hasn't been put on the cards yet, I'd be bold and make sure that you initiate that next step. The worst thing that can happen from asking to meet fairly early on in the process is either they say no because they need more time to get to know you, or they say no because they're not looking for anything serious in the first place. So either way, you have a productive answer to go away with. Either continue to get to know them until they're comfortable meeting up with you, or move on to someone else. Also, when it comes to arranging a date, I would advise that you two work collaboratively on this to make sure that you're forming a plan together. Now, I know again, some people have some strong opinions on this and feel like the guy should be the one to take the lead in this situation and organize all the logistics, the time, the place, etc., etc. But ultimately, the best relationships are based around teamwork and you wanna start as you mean to go on. Make sure to remember to lock down the time and place as soon as possible. Remember, up until a time and place has been established, that date is entirely hypothetical and nothing is known. It also then gives the other person the opportunity to make space in their diary for you as soon as possible, which means that you're being considerate to their time and valuing them as an individual, knowing that they're busy and have things going on as well. So the next part of the process is getting your mindset right before the first date. Now, one tip I would have for everyone here, which I found really helpful in my own dating journey is assuming that you're only ever gonna see this person for one date. Now, I know that sounds a bit defeatist, a bit pessimistic, a bit brutal, but hear me out on this. There's logic and reason behind this madness. So if you assume you're only ever gonna see this person once, it means that you're going to be focused on enjoying the time together, staying in the moment, and enjoying the other person's company for what it is, without any expectations or assumptions as to where things are gonna go. So many of the mistakes that I've made in my own dating journey have been due to the fact that I've been too emotionally attached to the outcome of that first date. That's meant that I haven't been emotionally present in the moment with the other person. I've been in my own little fantasy world thinking ahead to the next date, the next date, the next date, and the eventual relationship to follow. And it's also meant that it's hit me pretty hard emotionally when things haven't worked out how I expected them to. So just make sure that you're going in with the mindset of enjoying the time for what it is without any assumptions or expectations of what will follow after that. Speaking of staying in the present, another piece of advice I have for you is make sure that you don't bring any past experiences into conversation on your dates. 
Now, I know it's pretty obvious that we shouldn't be speaking about our exes on dates. I think that's a pretty well-established taboo. But this goes further. I'm extending this to speaking about online dating experience in general. I've had situations in the past where either I've initiated the conversation or someone else has around how we're finding the whole online dating experience in general, what our successes have been like, and that tends to kill the mood pretty quickly. I know that we want to bond over how weird this whole process is because it is unusual to meet someone online and people want to talk about it. However, my own experience has shown that it tends to make people raise their guards, increases anxiety and insecurity because the other person, based on your answer of how things have gone so far, is going to want to make sure that they outperform any of your other experiences. That then makes it very difficult to establish whether you two are truly compatible because someone might be having to put on an act in order to impress you. And it also means that any romantic atmosphere that has built up thus far is killed flat completely because someone else is having to work so hard just to put on this performance. So make sure that you keep this out of conversation entirely. And you can be honest with someone else. You know, if they want to have this conversation, just say, I'd rather not speak about this because I want to focus on you at this point in time. And that's a conversation that you guys can have later down the road once you're in an established relationship if you want to. However, whilst you're building that initial rapport with someone, make sure that they're not put in a position where they feel like they have to compare themselves with any of your other experiences. So let's assume the date's gone really well. You guys have had fun together. You're really excited to get to know the person more. This is where, again, I would exercise a little bit of caution. There's been a number of times where at the end of the first date, either I or my date has asked whether we want to see each other again. I would strongly advise against this conversation until you've had some time to reflect. The reason being is that people can't give you a well thought through and committed answer to that question when put under pressure on the spot like that. So allow the situation a little bit of breathing space. I promise you that this is gonna benefit both of you in the long run. Firstly, it will allow them the space and time to reflect on how things went and make them feel like they can give you a truly honest answer to the question, do you want to see each other again? And also it allows you to have the time and space to reflect on how things went before you even ask the question in the first place. It's so easy to use the excitement of the first date to influence your decision on whether or not to have a second. However, you also need to bring prayer and wisdom and discernment into that decision as well. Just because you had a lot of fun with someone doesn't mean that they're necessarily a good fit for you. That's why taking the time and space to reflect on how things went and what you value about this individual means that you're going to make a well-informed decision not based on just emotions but also based Based on thinking things through and bringing God into the conversation through prayer and wisdom from the Spirit as well. As a general timeline, I would take no shorter than a couple of hours and no longer than a day to come to a decision and follow up on this. On the one hand, you don't want to overcommit to a decision that you haven't thought through properly, but on the other hand, you also don't want to keep someone hanging and risk losing them in the process. Finding that balance can be tricky when you're really excited about someone, but I promise you, if you just take a step back and slow down a little bit, it's gonna pay off massively in the long run. My final piece of advice for you would be to make sure that you're seeing the person in three dimensions rather than two. Well, what do I mean by this? Well, in the whole online dating experience, it's easy to deconstruct an entire person down to just a profile and a series of attributes. But ultimately, they're a whole person with their own feelings, desires, and have the ability to be wounded by your actions. So make sure that whatever interactions you're having someone, you're treating them with honor, with respect, and with dignity. Ultimately, as Christians, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, and you need to view people through the lens of the value that this establishes. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any thoughts or feelings on anything discussed in this video, please do leave a comment below. We'd love to see some discussion on some of these key issues. If you like this video, then please do subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this and I'll see you next time.